So we just, it's funny, we ended with looking very closely at your stamps uh, and identifying those constant transfer role varieties. Uh, and so again, as I search early in the morning through my U.S. private die proprietary revenue stamps, um, uh, I was uh, amazed to find, and it, this actually is listed in Scott, but it is, it's grossly undervalued and it's very, very hard to find. I would put it in the scarce category. And, and I'll tell you why after I go through the story, because I, of course, checked with the colleagues that live in this space of U.S. private die proprietaries, that being Richard Friedberg and Eric Jackson and Michael yeah. Aldrich, because they've been in this field for quite some time. And talking to the three of them, I think all three of them with their 150 some odd years of experience have only seen this variety once. So here is a second example at least based on talking with all three of them that has come to surface. And it was a recent discovery that was kind of hiding in plain sight. And I will go through this H.H. Warner and Company safe remedies, as they called it. This is part of those medicine stamps from way back when, post-Civil War through the 1870s, 1880s. And this is a major double transfer of the central vignette. So of this region in the middle where you have the safe and the native and safe remedies and proprietary, very, very odd and unique for a large strip stamp to have any sort of transfer within the central region. Usually you have transfers and shifts at the extreme ends of the left or right. In this case, you have it in the center and it's, it's, it's there and it's prominent and you have to know what you're looking for. But again, really rare and amazed that this was just hiding in plain sight. This is a six cent medicine stamp that used to go on their product. Um, and I'll go through some of the history and then a brief examination. And I've done a lot of blow ups so you can see what it looks like. Again, reminding us to look at our stamps. And if you can't really see with your 10X or 30X, I always love to scan my stamps, put them on my large monitor, and then I can zoom around and see the details on your computer screen. Really helps nowadays in finding some of these uh, rare double transfers. So let me see if I can advance the slide. Here we go. So a little bit about the company here, H.H. Warner. They are out of Rochester, New York. Uh, this was founded by Hubert H. Warner. He was a very, very wealthy individual, founder of the Warner Observatory, much later on, studier of astronomy. Uh, he founded the Warner's Safe Remedies of Rochester, he had an office building. He did very well for himself, a very large building, uh, which was occupied, shared with another business that happened to sell fire and burglar proof safes. And if you see the stamp that I just showed you, you clearly see he his design of his stamp reflects his sense of humor because he called his uh, medicines, quote unquote, safe remedies. And he used an image of a safe on his private die stamps. I'll show you them in a minute. Uh, at the lower right, you could see a beautiful bottle, uh, brown, blown, uh, impressed. Uh, and this particular bottle is for one of his quote unquote cures, his safe kidney and liver cure. And if you've joined us in the past and you know about these private diet proprietors, you know the components of these would make you feel better, you know, irrespective of what your malady was because you know they contained an interesting amount of alcohol and other components. Um, and so you definitely felt good after I'm sure having a swig. But he had Warner's Safe Kidney and Cure, Liver Cure. He sold it for $1.50 a bottle. This is back in the 1880s. And that required a six cent stamp, um, which you know was that long strip was used to seal the top over the cork, across the sides. And you would break the stamp, you would rip it, you'd open the bottle and you paid the tax, you sealed the bottle, uh, it was proof, you paid the revenue, and it was advertising. And I just listed here the Scott numbers, if you're looking at the back of your catalog, uh, for the stamps that were issued. One was a small six cent stamp, like a definitive, I'll show you. One was the large six cent strip, which I'll show you. Um, and then also he had another uh, safe cure, one rheumatic and safe nervine. They came out a bit later, and they sold for prices that required different value stamps, a one cent, a two, and a four. They were issued in the 1880s as well. Uh, they had limited prints. This is not a lot of stamps to print if you're looking, 340,000. 
uh, 60,000. That's not a lot of stamps to be printing at this era for your products. Um, and as it turns out, uh, on July 1st, shortly thereafter, he printed some of these, the, the tax was repealed for use on proprietary medicines. Uh, but for a number of years, they were required and he utilized them. And these are very pretty stamps uh, and a very rich, deep color. Here they are, the same type of theme, uh, safe remedies in the center. It is a safe on wheels. You have a native in the middle uh, picking herbs uh, in, a, in a field, in a desert. There's a palm tree behind them. Uh, they're all this very deep, rich brown shade. And you could see at the left, one cent, the bottom left, six cent. And then at the top, these longer strips, which went on the top of the bottles to seal the bottles, a two cent, a four cent, and a six cent. And you could see part of this advertising was not genuine if stamp broken. Read caution on label. So now I really want to know what was in these bottles. And, you know, I haven't found one that's full yet from the 1880s, but suffice to say, I'm sure the maybe cocaine or morphine or alcohol content was fairly high and it would have cured you of just about any malady. Uh, and so uh, these are the stamps that they issued. Uh, they were all issued in the 1880s. Uh, and this is the one I want to talk about. And so you look at this from afar and it doesn't look anything spectacular. It looks like just a normal six cent stamp. But when you do look a little closer, there is a major double transfer in the center. And I'm going to show you blow ups of what I'm talking about. But it's a it's a pretty strip. If you're wondering how large it is, it's 95 by 18 millimeters. It's a pretty decent size uh, strip uh, brown. It was issued in panes of 60. All of these are on watermarked paper. Um, and like I said, it has that central vignette. You've got the six cents at either end, the company's initials, HHW and Co., in the center, you have that horizontal uh, bar pattern and you have US internal revenue and proprietary. So you have all the things that you needed to meet the specifications for a stamp that's a revenue stamp and it sealed the bottle, it advertised the product, uh, it paid the tax and then they reminded you if the seal was broken, this stamp was broken on that bottle, you know, there is a potential that what's in the bottle is not really what's in the bottle. And so this sort of really is what uh, what was issued during that period uh, and uh, very common for that era. But these are very pretty and this comes as a set. And these are all you know relatively uh, accessible and are not exorbitant with respect to, to price in the catalog. Um, mint and used. You could find these with original gum and you could find them, of course, that have been with little tears. And strips. this is a used copy. And if you look, there is no gum. If you look closely, there's a little bit of a cancel by the knot and there's some stains here. So it was definitely used. There were some minor little tears in various places. So this was on a bottle at one point that was removed and here it is. So now let me highlight when you look a little closer, the major double transfer, it's really unusual because it's in the center. Here at the left is a normal copy. You have very nice engraving. You have this safe in the middle. It is on four casters or wheels. You have the word safe and remedies above below. The native is kneeling, picking up herbs in a desert scene with a palm tree and some reeds. You've got proprietary period and U.S. internal revenue. Here on the right, and when I saw this, I, I, I cleaned my glasses because things just didn't look right. There was an odd doubling in the remedies. The wheel didn't look right. Extra ink in the white space. The horizontal bars were shifting into this clean white space, which you have a very clean white space. The letters of proprietary looked shorter. There was an extra line here. And a few other things that I'll show you just did not sit right. And I said, this has to be, it has to be a double transfer. I went to an old uh, 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 American Revenue article. I think it was from the 1970s. They're available online at the American Revenue Association website. I searched for safe remedies uh, and it pulled up uh, an article about double transfers. And, and there it was. And then I looked in Scott. And of course, they give this a designation, RS258DT. Uh, there was a very crude black and white image uh, or drawing, but 
I had asked around and no one had ever really seen it. So I started to do a little more digging and analyzing it. And what you see is that you have a, a shift of mostly the left. So cut this safe in half and remedies in half, and then go to the left. And this left half of the center is doubled, but the right half of the central design is not. Very unique in how this double transfer occurred when you're shifting, when you're rocking in the transfer roll to, to have this occur. Um, and it is prominent in the proprietary, horizontal lines, all the letters of remedies, the lower left wheels, uh, and some other images in here. And I'm gonna blow, blow it up and show you. Again, just, just a great little double transfer uh, the only one of its kind. So here's even a big, larger blow up. Left is the normal. And if you look closely, and I've highlighted it in yellow, you'll see a doubling of the palm fronds, this extra line to the left. There's an extra line in the trunk of the tree. If you look closely at his hands, left and right, there's extra lines of ink shifted to the left. His face has a little extra shadow in this hatched area. Even the horizontal hatch lines are doubled. If you look down here, this is doubled as well. So the little grasses. So this is not as prominent, but it's absolutely doubled. On the left, there's really no doubling on the right compared to the normal. So palm fronds, the face, the left and right hands, the lower left grasses, and some of these horizontal lines. So it's a shift to the left, subtle, and a tiny shift down. Let's go to the next slide to just show this. This is very prominent, unequivocal. Proprietary below, this is normal. Very nice white, clean letters, fully uh, white exposed. You have the bar here above and below the clear space and the horizontal lines. I've turned obviously this 90 degrees. So now if you look at proprietary, look at the extra heavy line in each of these letters, which is shifted down, which is the ink above in the black behind it. You have the brown vertical or now horizontal lines that are shifted into the white space. You have a bit of a shift in the lower frame line and you have a shift down here below. This is where the double transfer really sticks out. Um, even in here, you see the A is shifted down, the inside of the R is shifted down. So that's very prominent. In contrast, you don't see this on the right side of the stamp in US revenue, just doesn't exist on the other side. Now let's look closer at remedies and the safe and the wheels. Here below is a normal copy. You see how nice, crisp, and clean the Remedies is, and the wheels are very crisp, as well as even the axle. But when you look above, you can see the absolute shifting. It's very prominent in the R, in the E, in the M, in the E, and it really does work its way all across. And it's down and to the left especially if you look at the wheels, you see this extra ink that's in here. This extra line is the shift down. Look at the axle, how it's almost a double dot. That's a double transfer there. And the, the spokes of this left wheel go into the white space of the tire here. Uh, even a little bit on the right one actually has a little bit of a shift down. And you see this extra line here at the left of the safe. So very prominent double transfer. Um, here I blew them up even more because I, I had to make sure I was looking at the right thing. Here's the normal wheel at the left, very clean. This is the way it was engraved. Here is the double transfer. When they rocked this position in, they clearly shifted it in a certain way, wasn't complete, probably burnished it out and then tried to relay it back in and you create the double transfer when you're laying down the plate. And again, here is remedies showing the clear extra ink in the shift to the left. There's the R, there's the E, the shadow on the M and the, and the E. And it really does, you have extra little bits and pieces of each of the letters and remedies shifted uh, and the period. And here's a normal example below. So let's see if I, I might be done. Oh, and that's, that's the short little story uh, of this double transfer. Up at the upper left is uh, trade cards. You know, they advertise their wares and that's just an example of a young lady on her dog and there's a safe cure and he was promoting it. Warner also, there's another bottle, uh, a Warner's safe diabetes cure. Beautiful, beautiful bottle. You can see the safe uh, there as well within and the wording. Uh, again, bottles again are very highly collectible with, 
with with in this space, let alone the stamps, envelopes, ephemera, trade cards, and of course the other packaging. So in summary, you know, H.H. H. Warner was a Rochester, New York businessman. He was a philanthropist. He made his first fortune in the 1870s by selling these fire and burglar proof saves. It's estimated that his agents sold 60,000 saves worth an estimated $10 million at the time. No wonder he had a building in a very big house in Rochester and was a philanthropist and started in, you know, donated to the astronomy. That's about $268 million in today's present money. That is, that's, he did very well for himself. Oh, by the way, he made his second fortune by going into the sales of patent medicines. And he made his first acquisition because he bought a formula. For, oh, I have a typo, Nostrum. It should be N-O-S-T-R-U-M. He purchased Craig's original kidney cure from a Dr. Charles Craig of Rochester. And of course, he branded it as his own. In the 1880s, he engraved and printed these five private dice stamps to seal the bottles. And this is just a very scarce major double transfer that was found on one of these stamps. I don't believe, at least doing the research, that any of the other stamps in this series have been found to date with the double transfer. There's only this one. That doesn't mean they don't exist. Um, uh, but it's really kind of unique as far as strip stamps are concerned. And, you know, we looked at a lot of strip stamps and I have many others that were issued by the match and medicine proprietors. And most of those double transfers are at the ends. To find it in the middle is, is really uh, is pretty unique in this space. Of course, I'm searching for more. Uh, and, and a little bit of an, an after to this, since I made this slide deck up, um, it turns out, and I'm going to go get this and get a scan of it, uh, at least see a copy of it, uh, that a, a prominent collector still has an entire pane of 60 of these stamps that were printed in the 1880s intact, which means if it's intact and I can look through it, I could identify the actual position on the pane on the plate where this stamp is. So I'll leave that up so you could read it, but then I wanted to go back to the stamps real quick. So um, that's the story of this double transfer. I'm gonna go back to all of the stamps. So you might suspect that this is the stamp we're talking about that has the double transfer. You might suspect that any one of these others, like any stamp that was engraved during this period, uh, during this period of production might have a double transfer. It's just unusual to find a double transfer in the center. Center. I will tell you that this stick scent stamp is also known with the slight double transfer out at the left end. So that's typical of many strip stamps of the era. But to find the one with it in the center is pretty unique. So I just thought I'd share that with you. I'll stop sharing the screen. I thank you for your few minutes to let me give you this brief little story. But again, reminding us to look at what we have closely. This one was listed, but it hadn't seen the light of day in many, many years. And I think it's probably the second one that was found. This could be the one that was found when it, back in the 70s when that article was written up. And it could be that same copy. And I'd love to be able to find a second one and folks are looking. Uh, but, you know, there, there's my little story and double transfers. And, uh, and I appreciate your time there. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Charlie. My pleasure. So yeah, Sue, 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 I don't sleep. Means, yeah, Susan, I don't sleep, and that's safe. what I'm doing. Yeah, go ahead, Paul. Using the vignette of the safe in the middle, of having had a safe company, and then uh, tying that to the safe quote the safety of his materials. Yeah, that, that's neat. Yeah, no, he definitely had a sense of humor, and he, when you you made the kind of money from selling safes that you did, and you were already known for that. If you're going to sell proprietary medicines, you want to keep the same marketing, if you will, and advertising, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. what he did. Very prolific, and he 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 got national acclaim from also selling these across the country too. So yeah, yeah. very prominent. Well, thank you. No, my pleasure. Thank you, everybody. Questions for Charlie? Are you you're working on what about a half dozen of these, aren't you? The uh, I am. Proprietaries? Yeah. Uh, I, I am. I'm working on a number of them. I believe I've discovered, and this is going to be another project: a foreign transfer that's been unlisted on one of these private die proprietaries. Those are few and far between when a plate is reused by the, you know, uh, the engraver, uh, the company, whether it's Butler and Carpenter or National Bank, no company, doesn't happen as much then, but uh, Butler and Carpenter and Carpenter and Company, 
um, you know, had limited availability of some of their plates. And so there were times when maybe they would start a plate and lay down a stamp design on that plate, and then they would not follow through with that for whatever reason. And they would go back and reuse some of their old plates. And if they had already rocked in images of stamps from another proprietor, they could hammer that out and burnish it out. And then they could take their new die on the transfer roll and rock it in. Sometimes they didn't do a complete job of burnishing the old design out. And you're mm -hmm. left with a bits and pieces of a prior stamp design that you then rock in the new design and you can see part of that earlier design. It's called a foreign transfer. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Very few exist in philately and in U.S. philately. There's probably only 10 or 11 that are known. I know this because we're getting ready to publish an article in the Chronicle of the, Phil of the Classic Society of the first time a study has been done to pull all of these together in U.S. philately of foreign transfers on stamps. Some are from the general issue, some are from the officials, and three of them have been found in private die proprietaries. It's the first time we'll have a census. And I think I found a new one, and I'm almost done researching it, but very uncommon. You just don't see them, but I'm working on that too, Paul, and a few other little stories in this revenue space. It's a, it, I think it's an unstudied area, so there's a lot of opportunity to add some new knowledge and I just appreciate you got you you let me share it with everybody. I'll certainly keep us informed. I will. I will. So thank you. It's thank you. It's great to see. Other questions for Charlie before we move on? 